Hi. So today I'd like to talk to you about something which I found really interesting, increasingly interesting the longer I've been mixing. It's something I found really useful in mixing. Uh, one of the most useful things I think for speeding up my workflow and making me mix better. And it took me about 20 years to figure this out and understand this. And I think it's actually one of the most important things to understand in mixing, but it's not what you're probably going to expect. Um, but before we get started, if you can uh, like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and press the thanks button if, you, if you're able to do that. Uh, really helps the channel keep going and it's really appreciated. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about here the subjectivity of listening to music and the fact that we think we hear things the same if we're listening to something over and over again, but actually we're really not. And it's not really possible to do that. Um, as as I said, I mean, this might sound strange to you and you, you might disagree with me, but this is something that's taken me 20 years to figure out, to, to kind of learn. And it's made a big difference to me. Um, so what am I talking about and, and what's this all about? I think this is really important in mixing to, to know this and to understand this, because if you don't, it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole, which I'll, I'll talk a bit about that. So if I'm listening to say a snare drum and I'm adjusting something subtle, like a co subtle compression or something like that, or adding some saturation or whatever, but it's a subtle effect and I'm listening and I listen to that, that loop of music that's maybe 30 seconds long and I'm honing on how it's maybe affecting the snare and maybe the kick or whatever. The next time it loops around, kind of by definition, I'm not hearing it the same way because my brain's already heard it once and it's now thinking, yeah, I picked out those things in the last time I heard it, those changes that I think maybe are positive. Now I'm going to check whether I was right the first time I heard it. Am I really hearing them? Just want to be sure, because it's quite subtle. So that perspective has changed. I'm not listening to it to the first time, I'm listening to it and now checking different. I'm hearing it differently just by the fact that I am, I now have a different perspective. And if I keep listening to it at some point, probably fairly soon, actually, my brain's going to get bored to some degree. It's going to fatigue and it's going to like, oh, I've heard this snare over and over again. You know, I'm getting a bit tired of listening to it. I'm not really hearing it fresh anymore. And to me, I mean, that can happen after like, the, you know, just a few times around, really, if I'm really honing in on a fine point there. Uh, you know, it doesn't take that long before my brain starts getting a little bored and start looking around to listen to other things. Um, and so again, it's changed. And what I've found is that if you really look closely at how you listen, Every time you listen to something, it's different, even with a loop. It's different every time on a subtle level. And if what you're working with is really subtle, you see the problem. You can end up, it can be very hard to tell whether or not the subtle difference is when you A, B it. That's if you've matched the volume. If you haven't matched the volume, you're just, as, as far as I'm concerned, you've had it. You really need to match the volume. But, you know, if you're really comparing that and thinking, is this subtly better or not? And your perception's changing at the same time, that can be difficult to untangle. Now, it's one thing if you're listening to a loop of, you know, electronic drums, which really is exactly the same. Even that, I think, if you really look closely, um, 
it still sounds different every time for the reasons I explained before about the fact that you will be taking a slightly different perspective every time you hear it. But if you're listening to something like jazz, where every snare hit and every kick drum is, hit is different, and there's many other things changing all the time, even with a loop, but imagine you're listening to, you know, three minutes of a track or something. I mean, there's so much changing that you're, every time you listen to that, you know, you're really going to be hearing it different. There's just so much to listen to. And how can you remember exactly what that snare sounded like when there's another one coming right after it that sounds different and another one that sounds different and so forth. So And I realized that when I'm working with something really subtle, because of that, I can easily go down a rabbit hole and it's on that level of, I'm not quite sure whether it sounds better because it's the loop is playing again. And I think it sounds better, but I'm not that sure. And it might just be because, or I, I, you know, I'm getting a bit bored with listening to it. Or it might be just I'm honing in on some details I didn't hear the first time. So I'm thinking it sounds better. Or it might be if I'm on that level of unsureness where the level of subjectivity and hearing it differently every time is down at that same level, level of the difference that this thing is making, then I've learned to say, no, that is a rabbit hole. And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. That's just a time wasting rabbit hole. So. It's really helped me a lot because now if I'm working with some subtle compression and I'm A-Bing it and I'm, I'm unsure whether it's helping, it's just like, no, then no. I need to be sure. It needs to be really achieving what I'm trying to do. So, you know, if I'm doing something like that, if I'm adding compression or saturation or anything in a mix, I'm always doing it for a reason. And I mean, as a side uh, point from like the main topic of this, um, which might be helpful, you know, if you're not doing that, you know, if you're not doing everything for a reason, then I would say you've got a problem there anyway. And you should always be doing everything in a mix for a reason. Even if that is, I'm experimenting, there's a reason there. The reason is I'm not sure what this needs and I'm going to try and see what happens if I experiment to see if I find something interesting. That's a reason. Um, and you might occasionally do that, but you know, for me, nine times out of 10, um, or eight times out of 10, I mean, there's a certain amount of experimentation in mixing when you're looking for something kind of creative, when it feels it needs something extra. But when I know how a mix is going to sound, it's got all the elements it needs, then everything I do is for a reason. I know what I'm trying to achieve. And so if what I'm trying to do is work with something subtle to subtly glue things together, and what I'm doing is not clearly doing that when I be it, then I know that either it's the wrong compressor or actually, you know, I'm after the wrong thing. I'm after something that isn't really what this track needs and I need to look elsewhere. There's something about this track that's not sat the, this mix rather, that's not satisfying me. And I'm thinking it needs gluing together, but maybe that's not what it is. So it, you know, if I'm messing around in that kind of gray zone of, is this just getting to subjective, you know, changing every time I hear it, or is this actually improving or not? I immediately l I've learned to say, no, um, this is the wrong direction, or maybe I need to change the compressor, or maybe it just doesn't need gelling together or it doesn't need added saturation, or this is the wrong, you know, I'm doing this in the wrong place on the mix or whatever it might be. And that has saved me, saved me a huge amount of time of not going down rabbit holes and not spending 10 or 15 or minutes or longer messing with trying to get this compressor to kind of do something and sound better when I AB it. You know, it, it's, I find that that's always kind of a waste of time. Um, so, yeah, and, and before I really realized that, you know, I can't hear things exactly the same way twice, I kind of fooled myself into thinking, yeah, I, I'm hearing this, you know, I'm hearing this the same way, and I think I'm just going to dial this in, just this subtle little thing. And um, now I've realized that, like, that's, you know, that's the land of rabbit holes and, and fooling yourself. So, um if I can't hear a clear AB, then I say no um, and try something else. 
or think again about what I'm trying to achieve. Because any of us can get waylaid with that and think, there's something about this mix. I think it's done, but I don't think it's quite there. Um, any of us can get waylaid with thinking, oh, I think it needs a bit of this and I think it needs a bit of that. And when actually what it needs is, you know, the snare sounds wrong or, you know, the drum mix isn't quite right or something more, you know, more fun foundational fixing. So, um, I hope you find this interesting. I find this whole area interesting. Um, uh, it might be helpful to you. And I've actually find the whole thing, I find this whole thing area really interesting. Every moment of um, experience is actually different if you pay enough attention to it. Like right now, I, I'm aware of my hand on my, on my leg, the feeling of that. I wasn't a minute ago. And now I'm aware that I'm talking to you this moment is different. Now I'm aware of my hand moving. Like every moment, if you pay enough attention, is different than the one before. It, not, it never repeats. Um, that's just the nature of consciousness. And I find all that stuff fascinating, but I won't go down that kind of esoteric route, even though I find it interesting, um, because we're about mixing here. And yet, yeah, I think it really does apply to mixing. And a little bit of that, uh, I think, can be really helpful. So. I um, hope you found it useful and interesting, maybe. Um, if you did, please do give the video a like and ring the bell and subscribe and press the thanks button if you can. Really helpful and really appreciated and hope to see you next time.